today I have another huge printer. Actually, I prefer small printers, but companies, they seem to like to send me big printers. And uh, this printer is sent by a local Shenzhen company. It's called um, JG Aurora. R, R and L is kind of my enemy. I, I will, I, I think I'll practice more. Um, but that's that. Um, there are very few, you know, uh, JG Aurora printer review on, on YouTube. So uh, let's open it. I'm curious uh, what this looks like and what it can do. So let's open it and take a look. Okay, I guess it's time for me to call some helper elves to uh, move this for me. Be right back. Good work, elves. Thank you and see you later. So, um, let's see what we've got. We have 3D printer toolbox. In the toolbox, we have the warranty. Uh, the plastic cutter, a spatula, and the power cable. And then we have the 3D print, uh, printer filament here. And the last thing is the blue tape. So let's put that aside. So this is the uh, printer. Let me uh, move uh, the front. Uh, to the camera so that you can see. I should probably <laughs> ask the uh, elf to stay a little bit longer before I, uh, you know, finish the. Oh. I, I can do it. Okay. And let's take off the um, plastic. So the build plate was hidden uh, underneath the uh, phone. Uh, the build plate is not PEI, build tag, or polycarbonate. It's the good old blue uh, tape. Huh? Sometimes I still use blue tape, but in this case it's quite odd. But let's give it a try. Let's see. And uh, at the back we have uh, four magnets. At each corner, I guess you can just uh, clip it onto it. Let's take a look. Um. Yeah, it uh, snaps right on. That's great. If you want to, you know, maybe you can order another one for um, another build play online to uh, swap it out when you finish this one and you can use another one I guess but it's quite nice I like uh, the design so now let's uh, plug it in and let's take a look at their interface So let me set it to uh, English first. Now it's in Chinese. The setting. Uh, switch to English interface. Confirm. And then it will start. 
so I, I switched to English the font is kind of off but now let's level it first leveling okay. oh so the interesting thing is it's a hbar uh, gantry style and it has the linear rails I guess X and Y I don't know about Z axis uh, the strange thing is uh, the filament tube goes into the uh, drag train I've never seen anything like this but it's two thing out of three so I guess it's good uh, so the leveling is finished let's see what other options we have they have a uh, filament spool holder uh, uh, elevator mm, let's see so so far what i've learned is this is probably a, a direct drive style and the filament goes through the drag train and then there is a weird angle for uh so the filament has to go all the way to the drag train and it has the angle like you know so let's open the filament out later and see what's got So it's actually the Bowden style, not the direct dry. What? Oh. Okay. Uh, so the filament goes through the hole on this side and then go all the way back in. If uh, if it jams, what will happen? I have to what? Just for I don't know. As you can see, this is not the normal size spool. Uh, I don't know how. It's going to handle the normal size, so I'm going to test it out for you guys later. But for now, let's try this out. What just happened? <laughs> I think the spool holder's way press it down by itself. I didn't do anything. I didn't even press the uh, filament elevator, and there's a string of filament hanging out. So I was looking at the instruction on the top. I was a little short for that, so I miss it. And it looks like it doesn't need to go through the hole, it just the direction is wrong, so let's do a third time. Okay, I was uh, talking with the company about the issue I was having and then I tried a couple more times, I play around with it and I finally figure out how it works. So let me show you um, how to uh, put in the filament. It still needs to go through the hole first, so. 
but this time we don't need to push all the way in we just uh, push it in a little bit and click in filament So now the Bowden driver is pushing the filament through the tube and now it's slowing, uh, feeding it through to the hot end. Let's see. And the filament comes out smoothly. And as for uh, uh, fi uh, pushing the fi filament out of the extruder, this is how it works. So now it is coming out. It just come out like that. Oh. <laughs> So I didn't have to menu like grab it and then pull it out. I didn't know about that. So a couple before I uh, a couple, I tried a couple of times and it fell. Now it works, and the system works well. Uh, it was just poorly documented. Okay, let me show you the hot end now. The hot end. So from here you can see there are actually uh, two motors controlling it. There is the bottom dry, uh, motor to pushing the filament through and then the direct drive to pull, pull, it, uh, pull it back. If you are new to 3D printer, uh, it's, pretty, it's quite unusual for a 3D printer. But I think this system works okay. Um, and if you have a jam, it's easy to just, you know, pop it off because it is magnet. And then after you take the jam out, you just put it right back. Okay, for uh, the bed leveling, it is really interesting. Uh, usually people do software leveling, but this printer can also do hardware leveling. So I'm going to tilt it the bed a little bit. And there is an induction sensor and 3C motors. It can do real hardware auto leveling. So let me show you. So we hit now we hit uh, we go back and we hit leveling. You see, now the bed is all level again. So now I am just going to open the JG Aurora slicer. And as you can see, they just reskin the QR code program. The good news though, you can just copy their settings and drop it to the other platform like Linux or Mac or whatever. Right now I'm going to open my STL file, 3D Benchy. Here's our bench bolt. I'm not going to change uh, any of the default settings, but I'm going to add the ref to the bench bolt. And let's start to print it at point two and see how it goes. Okay, now let's try point one and no ref without the ref. Okay, now let's try something more, a little bit more difficult.
So I've got some test prints here. <laughs> here are some Benchy bolts. And this cube was created by uh, Angus, aka Maker Muse. Hey Angus, um, this is a really good test print and it gives the printer a really good workout. And let's put it, let's switch to this camera. This Benchy bowl, I printed it at 0.2. Uh, it has uh, wrapped because I was having adhesion problems with it. So, but the resolution, it is, <laughs> I think it is pretty nice. I can feel it with my finger. Uh, other than that, really no complaints. Let's compare it with the 0.1. I printed this at 0.1 and the resolution is a bit better. But um, same problem with the blue tape, they just stick to the, you know, stick to the bottom. So, hmm. This one is also printed at uh, 0.1, but this one is printed uh, from the Guider 2. I have been using it for a while. The print quality compared to A7, I would say um, the A7 is a bit better. And this is the uh, Torture Test print. So the same problem at the bottom, the blue tape, but it's the print quality. I I'm satisfied with it. So let's give it a closer look at the microscope. So this is the point two from A7. The layer line, the, uh, it looks clean and there are no major uh, flaws. So. Let's compare it with uh, the point 0.1, also printed out from the A7. The layer line is even finer here. It feels very smooth. <laughs> and let's take a look at uh, the point 0.1 printed out from Guider 2. It is a decent print, I would say. Um, Guider 2 is a workhorse, but uh, the print quality, as you can see, the details are not as smooth as the A7. But Guider 2 is very reliable, and I didn't have any uh, major problem while I was printing the Benchable. It's just uh, the layer line's quality is not as uh, good as A7. So as you can see, the A7 print quality, it's great. I would say it's better than any other FDM 3D printer I have reviewed. And the H-bar gantry, the movement is fast and reliable. Uh, it has the three point uh, leveling. So it basically is a hardware level, like it levels in the hardware. Uh, I think a lot of other companies is going to copy this feature uh, because when you hit level, it just automatically have level itself in the hardware. But it doesn't mean it doesn't come with other serious problems also. So there are other cons I'm going to illustrate. <laughs> Remember the drawer I didn't figure out first time. And I'm still using their filament. It's not like they have a chip inside or they have a proprietary system, no, but uh, they have an unusual size of spool and the size of the wheels is different from the one I usually use. Uh, the normal size one, the one I usually use is like this, is uh, a bit thicker and uh, the JG Aurora one is uh, thinner. Like this, this one is thinner. So this drawer only uh, fits the one of their, uh, only fits their filament. So why is that a problem? Why can't you just keep the drawer up? Well, you can't. See? So if I'm putting 
a bigger a larger spool inside it will go automatically go down and make noise like J -j 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 -j, and then it will jam and once it's all sealed up there is no way to fit in the filament so that's a really big problem if I have to use their filament or use other uh, filament than the same size made in other companies so next is the bed leveling right now there is no power going through the stepper motors that's why I can move the bed freely and whenever I'm taking off the bed I whenever I'm taking the hot plate off the bed it unlevels it a little bit if that's the case you have to uh, we level it every time you have to go you have to go to leveling and then it only takes a couple of seconds it will level itself I know it's a bit annoying but I think this is not a really big deal they can be it can be easily fixed uh, just keep the step motors power on obviously from the interface there you can see there are some English mistakes it looks kind of unprofessional but it's not the end of the world it's still readable I think I hope they will fix it in the future but what really bothers me is when you click inside there is a Wi-Fi icon when you click on it nothing happens it doesn't really have Wi-Fi I spoke to the company they said they plan to add on this feature later but right now they're advertising it and selling it as if they have this function but the truth is they don't have it so there are three major problems filament loading needing to relevel the bed in between prints and Wi-Fi but those are just firmware problems just patch it it's not that simple I talked to the factory they say I have to ship it, ship it back so they can physically take it apart and then flash the firmware to update it it's not a joke I was like why can't I just you know like every other printer plug in through the USB cable and then update it it's not like that I asked many times and they say you have to sh I have to ship it back and I don't think it's fun for you guys to ship a 20 kilo 3d printer back to China just for flashing the firmware so that's a big problem but I'm giving them a couple of weeks to sort out the problem they said they're going to work on it so let's give them a chance because it's a very interesting print 3d printer I don't want to just let it go and it's coming from China it's innovative it's wonderful and terrible just like the drawer so but if they confirm and they cannot fix it well you and I we're gonna work it out we're going to hack it and we're going to fix the problem but right now I'm just sit tight and wait on it this won't be my last video on A7 and remember if I can do it everyone can do it then it's a lot for watching